tell me, introduce yourself and say how you arrived here at Harrow, the process of coming, etc., to Harrow, as in your job interview, etc. Okay, um, so uh, my name is Richard Downs, I'm an economics teacher. I started off um, uh, a school in the UK called Mon College, which is a predominantly boarding school. Um, I then uh, realised that wasn't quite where I wanted to sort of settle, and I decided that I'd like my family to basically go out and enjoy, uh, enjoy the world, really. Um, so I started scouting around for, for jobs. I'd understood that the international scene had many, many good schools, but also had many, many not so um, good schools with, uh, with this, you know, this sort of pop-up mentality that schools would pop up and then quickly shut down. So I was looking for a very reputable sort of school, and, and that's when my eye first came across uh, the Harrow job, uh, which you know, I applied for. I, then, I was then uh, sort of took on, uh, taken under the wing of uh, the recruitment group called TIC. Mm -hmm. um, and they were very good in the transparency. They told me, you know, uh, sort of uh, the interview dates. So I then um, went to Harrow Hill um, for the first time, actually, for me, uh, which was uh, which was quite an experience in itself. And I met, yeah, all of the senior leadership team. Um, and the sort of the day was, yeah, a, a fair, a fairly intensive sort of ninety minutes, two hours um, interview. Uh, and then, you know, a chance really for I, I very much felt an opportunity for. I was to interview the senior leadership team about you know, what was Bangkok like and what was the school like and you know just to gain a bit of a feel um, for them and what they were like and whether it's the old thing that you've got to make sure well they've got to make sure you'll be a good fit and you've got to make sure that you would be a, a good yeah, fit. Right. Um, and um, after that, so um, after we sort of uh, had a chat about the lifestyle in Bangkok, and actually went home and then actually within about sort of six or seven days, I seem to remember. Um, then you know I was, I was on the phone uh, uh, with Nick um, about you know the offer, and and then we were scooped up seamlessly by um, by the visa team uh, and the, so, uh, to make sure that and the visa and the transportation and you know, all the logistics behind moving the family out there, um, which I have to say was incredibly helpful. They were pretty much. And I had some ridiculous questions, um, you know, very, very... Uh, Everybody does, but that's... Uh, <laughs> keep, keep asking questions, I um, think, is the right way to do yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it, it was, and I, you know, it was a question that, you know, you do worry about the detail, but, you know, I can't remember what the most ridiculous one was, but from literally, like, you know, what exactly kind of visa do I need to, what, what, you know, out there, will the, can I drink the tap water, and, and, you know, it was that full sort of spread. But and the beauty of modern day technology is that there was a lot of Skype interview, a lot of Skype, no longer interviews, but conversations. I immediately spoke to my head of department because I was recruited as a boarding house master. I was then spoken to the head of department. I then spoke, you know, many times to the director of boarding, um, Paul Blake. And, um, <laughs> and, you know, every single time something different came out. And then before I knew it, I was on, on the plane in August, uh, early August. and. Before I blinked, I was seeing you, you at the, you at the airport. And what, when you came through the gate on the bus and then arrived at school, what were your first impressions like of the campus? Uh, you can Google Earth it. You can Google stalk it, as I call it. Um, you know, uh, as you know, for hours, which which I did. And, and actually, the, the website is quite friendly the way it has loads of videos and all that stuff. But nothing, I, I think, from the from the chaos of Bangkok, and Bangkok is you know beautiful in its chaos in its own way to the sort of serenity and tranquility of coming into this and everything seems to just sort of calm down and nice, you, you're into yeah. this, suddenly you've gone from quite sort of, you know, it, it's, a, it's a city, yeah. it's a city in every respect. Because you're like on a busy soy, aren't mm. it's a busy road coming in and then you come through the gates and it's sort of like, ah, yeah. English again, sort of thing. Yeah, it is, it, 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 you know, green and pleasant, certainly, um, yeah. you know, uh, green and pleasant with, with in an oven, I think it's how to describe, you know, the, there's no getting away from the heat. It is hot. It's you know hugely um, hot. How, how you cope? That's one of my questions actually. How mm. are you coping with the heat and your family? Because you've got little ones. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I do, yeah. So my two children uh, and my wife indeed. My wife loves it. She just loves the fact she can, literally hasn't worn trousers and well since we've been here. Right. Um, my kids. The, the the thing with the kids, they run around, run around, run around, and then get very very hot, and we have to shove them in the aircon for a bit, and then they'd recharge and cool down, and then they'd run around, run around. So there is a bit of a stop start with the heat. Um, myself, I just sweated a lot, so I just nice. drunk a lot and sweated a lot, and 
as you as you the climatization process it is basically you just find you just don't sweat as much and when you walk outside you're not like oh you're saying it's perfectly normal um, yes, and you know I think it took me about only about six to eight weeks of you know to normalize right. into walking out and then actually a further sort of four weeks to stop appreciating it yes because um, it was you know it, how, how are you getting on with the Thai so Thai weather we've coped with what about Thai food people always say oh it's so hot you know? uh, yeah I mean there's a couple of key phrases that you know I advise people to sort of uh, yeah. pick up you know and, and you know start doing it you know the bit spicy and etc and but I, I, I'm quite lucky, I really like hot foods, I sort of enjoy food as, as a whole taste. and yeah, and the taste and and I, I love, and you've got everything from literally not just outside the front gate, it's got a nice little stall that does you some street food, which is lovely, to the restaurant just beyond it, to well, as you know, Jane's Kitchen and then you've got uber high class in, in Bangkok yeah. itself in town. So obviously you're just getting used to the area, so you, at the moment I know that you're going to move into boarding. Mm. Because uh, of the new boarding houses being built, but at the moment you live on the school site in the school accommodation. Can you tell the people who are watching this video what the school accommodation is like? This, um, it's townhouses. Yeah, the townhouse. I, I honestly put it on a parallel to some of the holiday homes I've been in. So you walk in, it's very white, and and the you know like say you know uh, the sort of marble effect floor, and you know everything's very white, and it does feel like a tiny bit of a holiday home. Um, and you get sort of the basic, the basic furniture, so you have a working kitchen, um, a dining table, a sofa and then sort of a TV stand and it's sort of enough to get you um, sort of set up but you know I've, I've managed expectations for people to come, when they come out they should have a bit left over to buy some you know, furniture yes. if they can ship it um, and you know actually our shipping's come relatively smooth, um, smoothly. Um, uh, but I have to say, you know, our biggest concern, I remember this, was how big are the beds, because tires are quite small, there was an image, you know, I, I'm over six foot, my wife's six foot, you know, our bed is great because we barely see each other. Right, know, it's a really big bed. It's a massive bed. The, the mattresses are hard, I mean, again, it's sort of tiny details, but, but you can buy these wonderful toppers and, and memory foam and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and, um, so that can be sorted. Uh, yeah, so the beds are really cool and big. I mean, it's, they're all three beds. You know, we have you know an ensuite bathroom, which is great, and and the, you know, actually the other two rooms, the kids, most bathrooms are wet rooms. That's something I didn't anticipate, and that takes a tiny bit of adaptation um, for obvious reasons. Yeah, it does. Um, they get quite slippy, don't they? Yeah, they do get quite. The slippiness is a big thing, and equally, you know, one's used. We now use one as a dry bathroom, one as a wet bathroom. You know, right. and we sort of adapt to that because it, it was a bit weird. But those people that have wet rooms will, will instantly adapt. I always feel like, mm, that's a bit weird. What's this about? Yeah, what's yes. this about? But, you know, for, for, for our needs, uh, you know, it, 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 it absolutely does the job. And it, it, it is really great being sort of almost caught by the community because people are very sort of aware and they, there's a lot of people that have been through that experience and they can remember that experience. And, and people are sensitive yet aware. So even though we did get people going, like, how are you? We're also left alone. Um, you know, right. which I think is equally as important. Yeah, people around you if you need it. Yeah. So let's talk about uh, the classes a bit. Yeah. So the classes that you have, does it feel very similar to the UK? We're thinking that these are second language students, uh, English speaking students. Does that make a difference in your teaching? Are you enjoying it? How's the class thing going? Um, uh, Economics. Economy, sorry, economics and business. So, um, in terms of difference to teaching, yes, yes, it does. I mean, but if if most most boarding schools certainly are sort of internationally flavoured, but even if you're not used to that, of course. But it's all it's all relatively sort of standard teaching stuff. But there are certain words that you know that you could struggle with yourself, and that you know the kids are going to struggle with, and you know you just put them up on the board. Um, I have to say, I, I've, I've not had a problem, the, the, one of the biggest things that was said to me before we came out here, oh, they're all going to speak Thai, and uh, you know, they went, I've not, I've not had that at all. The only time I've most noticed it is probably in the corridors, but certainly in classes I, I have not been aware, um, I should really say, of, of the sort of the speaking Thai to each other. I've occasionally said, come on English, but no more so than when I talk German students or Chinese students or any other nationality that I've taught. Um, the class sizes are good, so sixth form tends to be around about sort of 12, and then you know the IGC, the largest one I've had, the one I have, sorry, is 22. So that that's again that sounds slightly less um, well, certainly in the school I taught at in the UK, but and then certainly less than the, um, the state school I taught at in the UK. 
Have you got things like the, the mod cons that you need, computers or PowerPoints or overhead things? Have you got everything that you need to teach or yeah. is it a bit backwards? No, no, when you arrive you're given this, the, the Dell. I was from a Mac school and moving to Dell and it was a bit weird, but they have a great system that you know, most classrooms um, have either this overhead camera that I haven't used before actually, um, but they, they, you just clip yourself in and then all your PowerPoints can sort of upload. The internet connection, I have to say, is, is, is very good. That was, a, that was always a worry that, you know, I've got all these wonderful, you know, YouTube clips yeah, and these wonderful them, moving yeah. images and then the, the all buffering wheel. So the internet connection is very good. The power, the power does get cut occasionally. Um, I think that's something you have to be aware of. But again, you, you always have a backup and, you know, and when you're teaching, you, you know you can't rely on PowerPoint. And indeed, I do think you should always rely on PowerPoint. Um, and so you, you do have to wheel out occasionally the, the, the low power. The, the one thing that I have, I have to say was in my mind is the heat, so wearing this and the heat. Yeah, they, all the classrooms are, are over air conditioned. Um, I would say you almost have to, that's one actually standard thing that I'm not used to. You have to sort of go into your class, I'd say half an hour before if you can, and just check the temperature and, or set the conditions so the temperature is going to be okay because it's either Arctic or someone, had, or someone turned off the aircon, in which case yes. it's boiling. Um, a good, very good tip. Very and, uh, good tip. But again, it's 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 very very minor stuff. In general, you know the kids, um, you know, I found it a weird blend between they are more independent in terms of they'll go away, look at mark schemes, think oh I don't quite know this, and yet less independent in terms of uh, you know they do like to be sort of led through stuff step by step, right. a tiny it's bit. It's quite more. variety really. Yeah, yeah, huge, and I still. Okay. So I'm only on sort of month three, four now, sorry, three, 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 um, uh, yes, I think. Uh, and, you know, I still haven't, you know, naturally every student's different, but as a general sort of theme, uh, I found that, you know, they are more driven to wanting to answer exam questions. Yeah, so the children want to learn? Yeah, I'd, I'd say certainly the balance of desire for learning is probably slightly stronger. You know, I had, yeah. I had more reluctant students in, in England than I certainly I do here. Um, the only thing is, is the one sort of downside I would say is that expectations are very, very high. And, you know, you know especially sit form, everyone wants to go to a Russell Group, everyone wants to go to an Ivy League, everyone wants to go to Top 8 Australia. And, you know, and to just manage those and stuff like that, it, it sometimes is, is mm. well, it's, it's, it's hard. But, again, you get similar things in the UK. Yeah. Tell me about your average day. Like you know, maybe you get up at six, or so what mm. time you have to be at work, etc. I have to say that the biggest, and it sounds pathetic, but the biggest fear that I had when I was coming here was the fact when I spoke to my head of department, he was like, oh, you know, I get up about sort of five, and I come in from work about half six, and I was thinking, oh my goodness, I get up about sort of maybe about half seven, and I'm in work for about, I don't know, maybe sort of quarter past eight, and yeah. you know, maybe sort of, you know, a bit before then sometimes, but, um, you know, or at least, you know, I get because I have a young family. We have a routine that I sort of, you know, do bits and bobs in the morning and go into work. And I suddenly thought, goodness me, is that going to be compatible? But um, the, the the beauty, of, you know, actually, it, it was it was a worry about nothing. You know, people do start a bit earlier here, um, but then again, you know, it's addressed the other end that actually, you know, at, at my previous, yeah, you do, and you so really. School starts at. 7.40, 745, then what happens to you in the day? So it's uh, 745 there's a tutor, you have a tutor period, so if you are a tutor you, you sort of you know meet with your tutor group for 15 minutes, um, then 8 o'clock the first lesson starts. Um, most all my periods are double periods, um, and so 40 minutes long, so an hour of 20. Um, and again that was 20 minutes longer than my previous lesson, but I've actually not, it took me a bit of an adjustment, I often, I, you know a couple of times I actually ran out of stuff and then had to pull something out for the last five minutes, but actually that's another thing you very quickly adapt to, and actually in our 20s it's, it's quite cool because you can do at least a good couple of decent activities in there. So you go through till lunch, what sort of lunches like in school? Uh, yeah. <laughs> the, um, my, my school was somewhat different in the way we didn't have a central canteen, so th this was my first moment of goodness me, in the way that I, I'm also not used to juniors, so you know the pre-preps and the preps sort of kicking around your heels. And I remember walking in, at, you know, lunch at 20 past 12, and it is this sort of big canteen with loads of choices and massive plates, and mm -hmm. they were just kids. Is the food okay? Or yeah, the food. Is, is it just Thai? No, no, no. no. So there's, there's an international counter, then halal counter, and then a sort of fruit counter, a salad counter. And there's so many counters, I get disorientated, and uh, you sort of, sort of you queue up, you know, you, you semi queue up the kids, you're allowed in the building, and then you queue up the kids. 
and then you know it's a very similar sort of buffet style meal but I'm not fussy with my food I can sort of eat anything um, but uh, I've never found a day I was like Oof. you also in departments which I, I didn't get before get a little plate of sandwiches and fruit um, so you can sort of snack during the At day. At break time, so I think. Yeah, but they normally come in about nine, actually. So it's, it's what I call danger day. snack, um, where you just sort of find yourself. The bread, you know, thing is very, very sweet. And you sort of, that yeah. takes you, everything's quite sweet, I think. So it's everything's sweet. Huh? Um, but they love their sugar. So all, all's well in school. What about, uh, how do you, what do you do with your weekends? I know you're going into boarding mm. or you're doing boarding duties, but on the weekends uh, for a general teacher, what, what would you be doing? With your family, with mm. those ones. So two schools really. There's the there's the what I call the lucky ones, the young French singles. Uh, that basically they, they go off and have their epic adventures, be it in the city or you know outside, mm. uh, wherever they, wherever they go. I mean everything is it's a weird. I call it the sort of two hour hundred percent. That everything is within a sort of two hour drive from you know tropical beaches to you know massive nightclubs to uh, high culture sort of old Wat temples sort of type stuff. Um, you know, for me as a, as a family, the, the facilities on site are, you know, I'd say outstanding, you know, the, sw the you know, amazing swimming pool. Can you pool. use the swimming pool mm. gym? And yeah, I need to do a bit more gym, but um, certainly, um, it, it's a lot of stuff, it, it, you know, there's always a security guard around, that's something I, again, I wasn't used to, there's always a security guard, and there's a lot of sort of, look, can you open this up for me, and they, and they will, but tennis courts are on hand, swimming pools on hand. There's a there's a there's a decent gym on hand. You know, there's a sports hall. You know, on hand, and you and know, teachers can use these. Yes, yeah. yes, all the time. Um, the, the only time is actually when they're doing standard maintenance. You know, you know uh, and the swimming pool. Another really cool thing is not chlorine. It's a salt water based one. So, and that's that's uh, really makes a big difference as you got you know people with kids. As well as all, you can just jump in and go to a really, really expensive hotel, you know, expensive hotel that you can now afford, you know, in Bangkok. So, you know, the first time my wife and I have been to some pretty you know, ridiculous, what I call hotels, with massive suites that have cost us relatively little. Yeah. Um, so, that, that's one of my questions, really. To the teachers that are coming out here, can they afford to do these things? Uh, can they afford to go to the beach in these hotels because of the... Uh, let, let, let me put it this way, so, uh, and, uh, I cannot think how to say this without sounding um, decadent, so I'm just going to say it. You know, we, have, we have a maid, um, <clears throat> so all our sort of um, gecko cleaning and, and all, all the stuff that I don't think anyone likes doing. Um, not cooking, she, not many times cook, I didn't, I didn't quite know that actually, yeah. no, no one cooks. A lot of people just buy the food and again, you just buy the food. And the food's quite cheap. The food locally. Is, is locally, if, again, you can, you can find the expensive stuff and actually the expensive stuff is easy to find. But actually if you just get on your, your feet and walk, then you'll bump into about 15 million different food vendors that you... And the beauty of them is that actually, well I haven't had any troubles yet. Right. Um, as in, you know, every single kitchen I've been to, and we've tried a variety from street food to, my goodness me, this is a nice place. Um, you know, have very, it's all been fine. Um, you're right, the heat, the sort of the spiciness of the food is something to consider, but again, learn the phrase, you know, a bit spicy, and they understand, and they're, they're used to it. And yeah, we've had some, you know, ridiculous, you know, we went to, um, you know, a five-star resort in Kaui Ai, and we had a really nice hire car, and we did that for a week, and. We've been now to about three forest star hotels, and then you have our maid that does a lot of stuff, and she's really nice. And, yeah, nice you know, lifestyle. It, yeah, it just it's a lifestyle where in England we used to have to worry about childcare. You know, we, we, you know, you used to get in, it was dark and it's a bit cold, and you know, um, there's there's not many, let's put it so, there's there's a lot of stuff out here that's sort of I know it sounds horrible, but it's still done for you, and it's the stuff that you really hate doing, and. Life just is a bit easier and a bit nicer, to put it very plainly. Yeah, that's way to put it. Um, well, just to finish off, what sort of advice would you give to somebody who is thinking about coming here? Maybe give them a couple of positives and a couple of negatives. Well, yeah. not negatives, but challenges, maybe. What sort of challenges have you had? Yeah, the, um, they, they, they talk about the sort of, you, you do go through a honeymoon. You go through a honeymoon where you're in that sort of, you know, almost disbelief phase. Oh, my goodness, that, you know, this is something we, we were talking about. I mean, my advice, and it's, it's an easy advice, is that there is no reason not to try it. There is, I can't think of anything that there, there is no, for instance, you know, say in two years time, or in a year and a half time now, I think, yeah, it's not going to be for me. It, you know, transitioning you know, back to the UK, I don't see it being huge problems because the flights are done, 
you know, you get a lot of support transitioning back. And, and certainly at the start of that, I've got no plan to at all. Um, so for me, it, it's a question of, it, it, for someone that was thinking about it and pondering and really struggling with it, I really did focus on the, well, why not, instead of the why. And, and there's not many why nots, even if you just want a base, you know, a two year, very different break from what I, you know, almost got into the sort of, not the grind of the UK, because that, that's going to come out wrong, but you know, this, I guess the monotony for me, and it was a monotony of, you know, same country, same weather system, same, same everything, yeah. everything was the same, to somewhere that's very, very different. I would advise, you know, you do go through that honeymoon period, then you do hit the what I call the living in period, and that is, you know, the culture is different. You know, it's I'm not talking culture of just seeing a temple. I'm talking a culture of how they do things out here. It is different. You do have to be aware of it, and it is frustrating. So, you know, when the work permits are coming through, the bank accounts are a bit sticky. You know, uh, and you know the language barriers, and, and you do go through that, that sort of. Frustrating. Yeah, it can get frustrating, and you know, and you live here, so you do have to go and find out a decent, you know, decent places to go to. But but there's enough people around here that again share that pain and, and know what it's like, and and actually the, the team around you can sort of advise on that pain. There's no getting around it, you know. There is no getting around it. You know, the place is bureaucratic, and you know, and when you go to these massive state plants, you are just in general awe of, the, of these. My goodness me, it's like a piece of paper for everything. Yes. That you do, yeah. but you know certainly the, the team here, and I'm often down in HR, just going to look. You know, what do I do about this? And they they're very good at they staple yourself, they staple something to you. You then go off and you do it. For those that are really really independent characters, and you know, and I potentially am one, that is difficult. You know, to go. Goodness me, I need to. I, I feel like a baby. I have to have my hand held just to go and get right, yeah. my my passport done or my you know, visa. Removed. But really, you can't do it without them. Can you? you can't. But, and then I think there's a sort of danger then you, you, you sort of focus on that bit. But if you keep understanding of Thailand what it is, it's an amazing country with amazing places to go and see and a great launch pad to other places with, and I, you know, I know this is a sort of a recruitment video, but it really is an incredible school in an incredible part of the world with, you know, 99.99% incredible kids mm -hmm. and, yeah. Yeah, and a very supportive sort of staff network. Okay, and my last thing is uh, one word to sum up Harry Bangkok. And you are allowed to say busy. Uh, exciting. Exciting. Lovely. Thank you very much.